Hi, I'm Angela. And I'm Gabriel. And uh, we just completed our circumnavigation on the Island Packet 485 2007. Meet Pilar. She's been the home of Angela and Gabriel for the past five years as they circumnavigated the globe. Island Packet is an American company started by Bob Johnson in 1979, and the boats are still made in Florida today. They have a reputation of being very seaworthy boats and have won a lot of awards, including Cruising Magazine's Boat of the Year seven times and Sail Magazine's Best Boat three times. Pilar has been meticulously maintained by Angela and Gabriel, and she's ready to make another lap around the globe. Her current owners are moving on to their next adventure and are putting her up for sale. She's listed at $4.95, and there's a link in this video description. She has a spacious three-cabin, two-head layout with a center cockpit and full keel. Gabriel is a professional chef and restaurant owner, so the galley is set up quite well. The forward VIP cabin is quite spacious and has a head that it shares with the third cabin that has bunks. Being a center cockpit, the aft cabin is quite spacious and very separate from the rest of the boat. And it has its own well-appointed head. So let's talk to Angela and Gabriel and learn more about their beautiful island packet, Pilar. I completed the seven summits and then uh, after climbing Everest, I decided I was going to start swimming. So then I trained for three years and Angela helped me by feeding me uh, on the boat as I was swimming for three years and I swam the English Channel. And then after that, I figured the next adventure was going to be uh, sailing around the world. And both Angela and I have never sailed before when we bought the boat six years ago. And we decided uh, to thoroughly look for something. We are also not sailors looking for a boat. So we went to a lot of shows, talked to a lot of people, and ended up with uh, Pilar and a captain for uh, one year. And we were in Coconut Grove, uh, south of uh, Miami, and uh, spent a year with him. And a year to the date, we took off for around the world. Well, after the English Channel, I was like, oh, there's going to be something next because he's just an adventurer. And I knew there was something coming. And he said, do you want to learn to sail? And I said, that sounds great. And he still denies it. But I had no idea when we started the sailing that it was going to be around the world. Um, but when he brought it up, he's like, we're going around the world. I'm like, okay. I mean, I didn't really grasp the concept of it, but I was like, okay, I'm in because I'm not going to stay home without you. We actually, uh, our route was leaving Miami straight to Cuba and then Cuba, Jamaica, Turks and Caicos, Puerto Rico, down to Caribbean to Guadeloupe, over to uh, Bonaire and Carousel for the hurricane season. And then we snuck through the Panama Canal and spent uh, three months in Costa Rica and then Cocoa Islands for a few days, Galapagos five weeks across the Pacific and then basically hit everything from uh, French Polynesia, Cook Islands, Tonga, Nui, uh, New Caledonia, Vanuatu and Australia for a bit. And then we uh, sailed up the coast around the uh, Northern Territory of Australia and checked out in Darwin and headed over to Indonesia for a few months. And then uh, we were in Thailand for five months. And then we sailed from Thailand, made a quick stop in Malaysia, then went to the Maldives, up the Red Sea to Sudan, and then uh, through the Suez Canal, and then Israel. I got stuck in Israel for four months uh, with COVID. Uh, I didn't have it, but I got stuck there for the COVID lockdown. And then uh, sailed uh, over to Cyprus, and then to Turkey, and Angela was able to meet me in Turkey because the Americans could fly into Turkey. And then we did about three months in Turkey and then went to Italy and did all of Italy, France, Spain, uh, Gibraltar, Canary Islands, and uh, St. Martin, circumnavigation complete. <laughs> How long was that total? Uh, five years sailing around the world. It was better than I expected. I was anticipating like, oh my gosh, leaving, like going to the gym and going to the coffee shop and seeing my family. and. It's just been amazing. I, I think the best part about it is no schedule and no regiment. And if you sail in some place, you love it. If you hate it, you leave. If you love it, you stay. It's just a very simple lifestyle, for, especially from a woman. You don't have to worry about makeup or what you're wearing. It's just been amazing. <laughs> well put. Yeah. Pilar is a Island Packet 485, basically 52 foot sailboat, uh, cutter rig, and uh, full keel. And the guy that designed this boat designed it for going around the world, uh, basically sailing downwind or broad reach most of the time. 
it's a heavy boat so when we're in big seas it's not that rough I will say it does get rough but uh, it was just a great boat and we also like the enclosed cockpit not being sailors as we were looking at boats we were looking at boats that were completely exposed in the cockpit except for a small spot where the, uh, the Dodger was blocking the wind and rain and I said that's not going to happen. I don't want to sail around the world with wet underwear. So uh, we're completely closed in, and we have sun covers around the whole cockpit as well. So it's really sun shades, I should say. So it's really, uh, it's it turned out to be a great boat. When we bought it, it was pretty well set up already. Uh, you know, you'll I'll show you some of the things that the guy did before with a lot of built-ins and a lot of things that really made it easier for us. But I also added an additional autopilot with an easy switch over so that in case you lose your autopilot you got another one we got a great spectral water maker with the one in the boat right now is brand new um i mean salt water and freshwater wash downs in the uh anchor locker up front um full sun cover it covers the whole boat the boat is completely equipped for everything i mean i got the iridium go i've got everything hardware doing antenna in the back i've got the satellite phone in a cradle the nav station's fantastic uh, the, the, the boat's, you know, re ready to roll. The showers here are amazing. You just, I'd rather shower here than in a hotel. I mean, I love our showers here. Um, there's plenty of space, like closet space, I had no problem. I even have a little vanity, like it's built in for all my things. And I just, I've never felt like I wasn't in a home. Pilar feels like a home. It's just so big and comfortable. And that shower is nice because you can sit down, especially when you're at uh, at sea. Yes. Yeah. The shower and standing up could be a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're going to sell Pilar when we get back to Fort Lauderdale. It'll probably be on the market by the first week in February 2022. And um, we want to sell the boat and we're going to the next adventure. And the boat is sail away. Basically, somebody comes up, I've got spares on everything. Uh, nothing needs to be done. I just put on brand new uh, sheet lines, halyards, uh, all the sails are new. Uh, it's ready to go. I mean, the dinghy, brand new Yamaha, six horsepower uh, engine, everything's ready to go. There's nothing that somebody would have to do um, unless there's a few things cosmetically that they wanted to do that they were excited about, but otherwise the boat's ready to roll. The boat will be for, is going to be sold through Swisher Yachts out of Seattle. They were the guys that helped me find uh, Pilar, so I figured I'd give them a shot. They're not in Florida, but uh, with the internet now, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Well, unless there's anything you really want to add, let's give it a tour. Okay, let's right. do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, Gabriel, uh, I guess let's just start at the bow and you give me a tour all the way back. What do you got up here? Sounds great. We got uh, two anchors up here. One I really haven't used much, but the, uh, the other one's got, uh, it's a Rachna, yeah. which is held great everywhere. Uh, and I got 300 uh, feet of chain on it, which is a necessity going around the world. Sure. Uh, I got the windlass here, Maxwell windlass. Uh, has worked fantastically. It's also got the spot for the chain, chain or road. Uh, inside the anchor locker, I've got a fresh water and a salt water wash down, which is very helpful yeah. when you're going around the world. Um, up in front, got a, a brand new uh, Genoa staysail, and the main, all the sails are new from Max Sails out of Stewart, Florida. Um, working back, uh, I've got the uh, preventer. Uh, blocks here that run back to the cockpit. Okay. Uh, which are uh, another necessity for. Oh, I see. So you got the lines that run back and they catch the, uh, like the boom or the yeah, boom on one on side. Yeah, and on the boom, if you can look up at the boom, it's got the uh, two lines, one on each side, uh -huh. that attach to the uh, preventer line. Okay. And I've got uh, quick release on the preventer line, so it works out. Uh, it's very easy. Okay. So what you got a. Is this for your, you can put a spinnaker up there? You got a spinnaker halyard? Yeah, I've got a spinnaker halyard and I've been using it for the Code Zero. Okay. Which uh, actually, uh, I mean, it's a light wind sail. Right. Uh, I would say that uh, getting a Jenniker, whoever buys the boat, you grab a Jenniker and have it on a furler up in front of that same uh, halyard. It works out perfectly. And you're, I mean, notice your teak, man. It looks brand new. Did you have this resurfaced? You know what done? I did? I actually had it uh, varnished for the whole way around the world. And uh -huh. uh, about six months ago, I had them completely strip it down. It just, if you're not in a marina all the time to wash down your boat, it just ruins it between the salt and the sun, salt sun. So for cruising, this is definitely the way to go. And it, it, it's, it's actually been preserved perfectly because it was varnished. Yeah. Well, it looks brand new. Yeah, for sure. So, okay, let's... Uh, 
go a little bit aft here and uh, talk about the stuff at the main. So what all equipment do you have up here and do you actually, I mean, I, I see that you have the, I don't know, what do you call these things anyway? These are granny bars. Granny I gotta bars. tell you, these are very important. You're up here working on this and you're in big seas, you're leaned against it. It feels a lot more secure. Of course, mm -hmm. you're attached in as well, but it just makes a big difference. When you're working on something you're leaning on, it gives you more force. And I noticed um, you've actually got your, you're putting your jack lines up too. Yeah, getting ready to take off again. So put the jack lines on and I actually put them more centered on the uh, center of the boat so that I'm not going overboard no matter what. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so what all, what all do you control up here? Uh, basically, uh, everything runs through here. You got the uh, spinnaker pole, which is very easy to uh, deploy and to take down. It's telescopic, I guess you would call it. It goes out pretty far. Um, and then I've got, uh, this is my halyard for the uh, main sail. And on this side, I've got the staysail halyard, jib halyard, and also the um, code zero halyard. And then the lines to control this uh, spinnaker pole. But everything's here. I got I put actually jammers on this side for all three halyards. Right. Which is helpful. I didn't put one on this side for the main because I've got it locked in. It's the only thing on this side. Um, this is self-tacking uh, stay sail stay sail, which is actually the, when you're using this, it's usually pretty rough. So yeah. it's nice to you know, just be able to tack. But otherwise, everything else runs right back through to the cockpit. So, so how much? What do you actually have to come up here to control then? I mean, uh, if you're going to deploy a spinnaker pull, you got to come up to deal with this here. Uh, and that's about it. Everything else from the cockpit? Everything from the cockpit. Okay. And you, and you do have in-mass furling, I see. Yeah, yes. And it's actually worked out great. When we uh, bought the boat, people mentioned, oh, you know, there's problems. We have had no problems with yeah. it. You know, it's a Sparkcraft uh, mass and boom. I mean, the boom's got to weigh about 700 pounds. Yeah. I mean, it's really robust. I mean, the, the, the boat was built for heavy weather. Okay. All right, uh, let's move back aft to the cockpit. Ever since I've started sailing a center cockpit, I've kind of been converted to that. And you have a full enclosure here. It's really nice. Yeah, you know, this is something that was important to us because we're going to be out for a long time, you know, when there's rain. And if you're sailing downwind and there's rain and wind and waves coming up, you're protected. Yeah. Uh, so we can completely close in the cockpit completely. And also we've got uh, sun shades that go all the way around. I even have one for the front. Uh, it's, it's worked out perfectly. And we're sitting in these seats looking forward, where most of the boats are set up with the two uh, helms. In the back, you're sitting looking across. I just thought it was just nicer to be able to be looking forward. Back here, you have this big deck area here and a uh, huge davit system here. Yeah, actually, uh, the davit system works out perfectly and it's high. You know, you're, you're not going to have to worry about taking any waves from behind. Uh, it's robust. I mean, the, the, the stainless steel piping on this thing yeah, is huge. Pretty, pretty big. Uh, I got the wind generator and, you know, AIS antenna and also the uh, Sirius weather antenna. On this side, I've got the uh, two satellite antennas along with the wave Wi-Fi antenna. And uh, so you said you've got the four solar panels up there and then you have more of on top of the... Yeah, I've got three big ones up here, four smaller ones right here. And uh, the back stair is nice too because you're able to step right down. There's a great ladder system on here. Mm -hmm. It makes it very easy. Uh, you're uh, actually right on top of the, uh, the fuel tanks for the, um, the gas uh, stove inside. Yeah. There's another one that's here that we use for, for fishing. We actually drop the fish in there and let it calm down a bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, or garbage if we're on a shorter cruise. Yeah. And then this is pretty special. I mean, this is really... Um, this oh, has wow. really worked out great because this is, uh, I mean, this, this, this lazarette is perfect. I've got the water maker back there. There's one of the AC units back here and plenty of space for everything you need. Yeah, and I guess you would store your fenders in there and such? Fenders go right in. It's perfect. Okay. Yeah, that is nice. Nothing on deck while you're cruising. Right. You're into the cockpit. You got your helm station and everything. You can control basically everything from here. You got, so you got a bow thruster? Yeah, the bow thruster's here. It can control the anchor from here. Uh, there's an additional uh, small GPS, which basically a uh, uh, Garmin, which we've been using basically for the GPS, you know, position, but also for as a clock. Right. And got the Raymarine here, which has got everything. I've actually got uh, charts, uh, cards for this uh, Raymarine for the entire globe. Oh wow! Yeah, for sailing. So oh, that's, that's cool. an added uh, bonus. Um, yeah, everything's handled from right here. It's perfect. I've actually got underwater lights that I had installed. Uh, mostly in just in case uh, something happened and we're in the middle of the sea and I right. need to see what was going on. And I've got an air horn that's uh, from here so that uh, can wake anybody up that's <laughs> headed your way. Yeah, we right. almost had a near uh, collision in the Keys in Florida when I was learning how to sail and uh, decided that we should have something a little more, a little more substantial than the handheld uh, air horn. Right. And so you have your uh, your 
I guess your Genoa sheets on either side here, are they, uh, is that uh, is electric windlass? Yeah, these are uh, two uh, electric winches and then there's another electric winch over here which handles the uh, the mainsail. Okay. So, makes it a lot easier. So, uh, so every, most everything you would need to run on day to day is, is electric winch? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. That makes it I mean, easy. the only thing is if, if I've got the, uh, I can use this electric winch right here to furl the sail if it's on the other side. Okay. But otherwise, I, you know, do it by cranking. Okay. It's no big deal. So we're going to head down inside now, and he'll show me some of the systems, and then Angela will take over and show us the guest cabins. So this is kind of a cozy little nav station. Yeah, it's actually very comfortable, especially if it's rough out. Yeah. Um, we've got a, uh, actually, I just put in a brand new Fusion uh, radio, which has got six speakers around the boat, which works out great. Uh, it's got a... Um, uh, the sat phone with a cradle, so you don't really need to grab the phone. You've got a handheld uh, handset, not a problem. I got the Iridium Go here connected to a uh, full size iPad. Um, keyboard for the iPad right there, and then it's a nice place to lay your map down while you're traveling. There's a uh, slave uh, Raymarine uh, char plotter down here that works off the one in the uh, cockpit. I got the SSB, two VHF radios, one for backup. Um, over here I've got uh, the spec to water maker controls, uh, water tank uh, sensors, uh, uh, this works off of the um, wind generator and also it's a battery monitor basically which works off of the um, solar panels and the, uh, the wind generator and then uh, a Zentrex uh, control as well. Uh, everything's pretty easy, pretty accessible, everything's got its own breaker. Um, yeah, I got my belt. <laughs> <laughs> and you say that uh, while at anchor, I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't ever need to turn on generator or anything no, like that? No, no. I mean, it, I guess it depends. If there's no sun and there's wind, the wind generator, especially if there's no sun, it's usually blowing 20 knots. So yeah. the wind generator will really produce a lot of energy. Uh, but otherwise, no, not a need to. But, Do you have a generator on this? Uh, yeah, I got a brand new uh, generator. It's a uh, Northern Lights 9KW. Okay. Um, I say brand new, it's got just over 800 hours on it, but I just have a thousand hour service done on it. Okay. So, and then uh, 110 horsepower Yanmar engine right next to it. That's, that's a pretty good, yeah, that's pretty good size for this boat. Yeah, 110. it's 110 turbo, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's really, I mean, the it, boat does it, weigh 28 tons, so yeah. I mean, it definitely needed the right engine. What, uh, if you're just under motor alone, what kind of speed are you getting? You know, our speeds are usually anywhere between uh, six and a half and uh, eight knots. Okay. One more thing before I hand that over to Angela to show us the rest of the boat. Uh, that is not custom right there. No, these actually are built-ins that the previous owner did, and it looks like they were done at the factory. Oh, okay. Right? I, mean, I mean, they're beautiful. I'm using this one for a humidor, actually. Right, right, right. Smoke a few cigars around the world. Just a couple, so yeah. It's humidification I've here. smoked some with you in the Marquesas. So. Yeah, you did, yeah, and yeah. you smoked a few here, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> and on this side, this cabinet we're using for dry goods for the kitchen. It works out fantastic. Fantastically, okay. and he did other built-ins with all, attaching all the pans and everything, yeah. uh, so that nothing is moving underneath the uh, stove. Actually, everything's got its place, all yeah. the tools, so you don't hear a lot when you're sailing. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's hand it over to Angela and let her show us the, the rest of the boat. Now, the much prettier side of things. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Angela. You can show us the rest of the boat. Why don't we start at the forward cabin and just kind of work our way back? Okay. All right. Perfect. We've had a lot of guests on Pilar, um, yeah. and this is where they stay, and it's a full. You know, cabin, the mattresses are the highest quality. Yeah. They, they actually don't shift at all. Um, the springs underneath kind of move with you. So, I mean, it's a great bed. Great sheets. Um, a lot of storage. There's storage over on this side that's more shelves. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd open them up, but they're, oh. they're jammed. That's fine. <laughs> um, over here, there's more storage and a closet. Um, great ventilation when you get all three of these windows oh, open. Right, yeah. the, wear, the air just whips through here, it's great. Um, there's two accesses to this um, bathroom. Go ahead. So if there are people in the third room, they can come in through this way. Um, it's a full sit down shower, lots of storage. Um, it's just great bathrooms. I mean, you can get ready in there. I've never missed being at home in my own bathroom. And they're from this way. Um, for the third um, cabin. And so you do have a third cabin there? Yes, and it is bunk beds. And um, right now we've used it for storage, but we have had passengers on and it's completely cozy and nice and great ventilation again, lots of windows. Um, it's just a great little side cabin, but we use it a lot for storage. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> we use our third cabin for storage as well. All right, yeah. let's head into the salon. As you can see, this is a huge salon. Yeah, yeah you got two big uh, settees on either side, I guess. 
Yeah, it's great. They're comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, this table here okay. um, comes down. You can either have it just for here or it expands over where you can have a huge table for both sides. I mean, you could have Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> Right, here. with eight people. Yeah. Um, it's just a great... We don't really spend a lot of time down here. We were just talking about we spend most of our time up there, but... It's completely comfortable. I do yoga here. Oh yeah, you work out. Do I do. Right I do yoga here and work out when we're at sea. Okay. Um, and then it's air conditioning, of course. And then you have uh, storage on either side. Great storage. There's storage under under the cushions. There's storage behind here, behind there, um, behind the cushions, underneath the cushions. This boat's got amazing storage. I okay. mean, there's a there's little places everywhere to put things. Yeah. Um, there's also we put our fishing poles up here. Um, we have fished a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and um, actually caught some really big ones and let them go because they were too, <laughs> too big, big. To, for us to eat. Yeah, so, and I, I, you were, we were talking about how like the teak interior kind of gives it that homey look and everything. It does. It makes it more rich, um, more homey, um, just solid. And you know the windows when you're sitting down. I mean, you can see everything. It's just an amazing salon. Yeah. So uh, we'll head back into the galley, and I know okay. that's really important because Gabriel is a, a professional chef. So. I know. I almost feel guilty being the one showing this because <laughs> yeah. Gabe has done most of the cooking. Oh, has he? Okay. Um, I do breakfast and lunch, but most dinners mm -hmm. Gabe is in charge of because he's the chef. But everything, because of the previous owner, um, they set this up like so organized and so perfect. It's all screwed in. All these pans are screwed in, so you just unscrew them. You got your coffee mugs here. Um, you have dry storage. Um, two, you have a freezer and a refrigerator. We use it both as a refrigerator around the world because we're more into fresh. Yeah. We haven't really used it as a freezer. Um, down here, you have your your drink drawer. Okay. Um, you know all the plates. There's storage here. These are silverware. Um, it's just there's so much storage everywhere. It's it's unbelievable over here. If you notice, every place has a little spot. Right. Like even the, even the tongs and the whisk and yeah, all that have their own place. Everything has its place. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're under sea and th the conditions are topsy turvy, it, it's really. And it's a good, I mean, if you're working here, you can kind of brace yourself on either You can. You want. And there's great counter space. So you have room, yeah. you know, whatever heel you're on. If you're over here, you can work. If you're on this side, you can yeah. work. So it's just, it's an amazing galley. Okay. All right, let's uh, head back to the aft cabin then. This is the master suite. This is where we sleep most of the time. I mean, sometimes we venture up to the front, but um, this has been our bed for around the world. It's been comfortable, same quality mattress, um, storage underneath. Um, that's where I put all my like shorts and shirts. Um, we have a nice closet here. Um, Gabe and I share for all hanging. Okay, I'm gonna I'll get a video of that in a second, but yeah. Um, more storage here, storage here. This is my favorite. It's a little vanity. Oops. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, this little vanity is for like all my makeup, even though I say I don't wear any when I'm sailing. <laughs> well, <laughs> you still need some. You, still mean, nice, you don't need any, but it's right. so the girls like to have yeah, it. So, it's yeah, it's a nice little woman place. Like I keep some jewelry in there and um, mm -hmm. more storage back there. Uh, yeah. Great ventilation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that'd be nice. I mean, you get this, open this up and you get air coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. The air just whips through here. Okay. I mean, we very rarely use our air conditioning. And a nice big uh, head over there. Nice. The same kind of setup as in the front. Um, a seat so when you're sailing, you can sit down. Um, nothing gets wet because the doors, you know, close, which is an added bonus. So many boats, everything is sprayed wet, you know, when they take a shower. Um, a lot of storage. Again, I mean, the storage is just unlimited in this boat. Okay. Um, everything's solid, too. It's just all wood, and it's just been amazing. Sure. Be sad for, I'm sure it'd be sad for you to let it go. It, it will be bittersweet. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing, but I'm, I know with Gabe, the next thing's going to be amazing, Right, yeah, too. right, true. So, so, all right, well, let's head upstairs, then. It, uh, guys, it's, uh, thanks for giving me a tour of the boat. It's Pleasure. Been, nice it's to great see you, to Bobby. see you again. I know. Almost four years ago, exactly, we met in the Marquesas, and then you just happened to pick this marina and dock right next to my boat. Incredible. Small uh, world. It is a small world. <laughs> so, if you guys are interested, in this boat it is for sale there's a link popping up there's one down in the show notes and uh it's a pretty solid boat it's been around the world so. thanks bobby sure thanks bobby